If you're going on holiday, chances are you'll be passing through one of these, a major international airport. With so much security around, you'd think that your belongings are perfectly safe. But as the hostlers are about to demonstrate, ingenious thieves can still separate you from your possessions. In fact, they can even make you give them your hard-earned valuables. Paul's inside the airport terminal. He wants to see if this con will fly in the airport pickup. This is the area right outside the baggage reclaim hall. It's here that taxi drivers wait to pick up arriving passengers. And that's exactly what Paul is doing. On his clipboard is the name of the passenger he's expecting to meet. The con is on. Hi there. Great. Let's, uh... Like any good driver, Paul insists on taking care of the luggage. No, we bring the trolley, because uh, I'm probably going to bring the car around. Yeah, it's probably the best way. Of course, this isn't Paul's day job. In fact, he's got no intention of giving this couple a lift. What he wants is the luggage. Welcome today. Oh, good. How's the weather? No snow, no. What I'm going to do is save us a little time. I'm in the driver's car park. You can't go there because of the security thing. If you wait there, I'll run your bags down. I'll be there in less than five minutes. Otherwise, I've got to take you to the other car park. It takes 15 minutes or so. Okay, so just straight ahead of these doors, the barrier, I'll see you there. Usually takes about three or four minutes. Okay? Take care. It's like taking candy from a baby. Paul walks off with their bags and the Macs go outside to wait for a car that will never turn up. So how did Paul convince complete strangers to trust him with their bags? And how did he know the name? To find out, we need to go back 20 minutes. Shortly before the passengers landed, Paul took up position in a cafe next to the arrivals gate, waiting for the right opportunity to present itself. And at this busy airport, he didn't have to wait long. This guy is a real taxi driver, and he really was here to pick up some arriving passengers. He had no idea that he'd just been caught up in the hostler's scam. This was the key moment. Without arousing suspicion, Paul had to sneak a glimpse at the driver's clipboard, which gave him the vital piece of information he was looking for, the name of the arriving passenger. He copied the details onto his own pad. But that was only the first part of the scam. In order for Paul to pause as a driver, he needed the real driver to disappear. Enter Alex and Jess, who'd been watching the whole time. As they walk past Paul, they clock the name on his pad and assume the roles of the passengers. Hawkins, Hawkins, Hawkins. Oh, Hawkins. Hello. That's us. That's Hi, there. Hi there. Richard. Hi. Nice to meet you, Hello. Richard. Hello. Hi. Hi there. Sorry, we came out of a came different out of exit. Line. Oh, did you? Yes. The real driver had no reason to question Alex and Jess. And as soon as his back was turned, Paul stepped into his place. Next, having moved the driver away from the arrivals gate, Alex and Jess had to ditch him for good. Sorry, can I be really annoyed? Can I slip to the loo really, really quick? Is that OK? Um, should we meet you by the paying machines? We... Do you know where they are? Yeah. Yeah, we, 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 we do this a lot. We do this, uh, like, twice a week. <laughs> Thank uh, but, yeah, you. we'll meet you down there, cos I'm just going to... We'll, we won't be... Two minutes. Thank Thanks. You. Job done. He'll be waiting for them for a very long time. At the gate, when the Macs saw their names on Paul's clipboard, they naturally assumed that he was the driver they booked. Hi there. Great. And that's why they had no problem handing over all their possessions. After waiting outside for 20 minutes, the Marks start to wonder what the hold-up is. 
plenty of time for Paul to catch his own ride in the car park, courtesy of Alex and Jess. Eventually, it dawns on the Marks they're never going to see their driver or their bags again. We had like the shirt and black tie and the black jacket and the long coat, so he looked, I mean, he looked really professional. And he was from Glasgow, so we just believed him. <laughs> it's not as if we checked his ID, checked, you know, kind of see some ID before you leave with a bag. See, the reason why we trusted him was because he was literally standing there with a piece of paper with your surname on it, so. In this scam, there's absolutely no reason for the marks or the driver to assume anything until it's too late. And with Paul standing there with a notice board saying the marks' names on it, they naturally assume that he's been sent by the taxi company. To avoid this type of scam, the driver can ask the passengers where they're going because obviously he knows the destination and they should too. And the passengers can check his ID. But the most important thing is to remember not to allow yourself to be separated from your belongings. When abroad, many travellers hire cars or take their own cars on holiday with them. But what happens if things go wrong with a vehicle when you're away from home? Or even worse, when con artists make something go wrong? We're about to find out in the oil slick scam. Alex and Jess want to get their hands on a car. And in a busy holiday resort like this Costa del Sol seaside town, it doesn't take long for some potential marks to park up next to them. The motorists head for a supermarket, so they should be gone long enough for Jess to take a closer look at their car. Apparently fixing a problem with her shoe, she kneels down out of sight. What she's actually doing is more sinister. In her hand is a bottle of brake fluid. She empties almost the whole bottle under one of the car's front wheels. Now all the hostlers have to do is wait for the marks to return with their shopping. Seeing the marks come back, Alex and Jess get out, ready to intercept them. What is that? That is a massive puddle of brake fluid. Alex? That's brake. That's braking fluid. Is that your car? Yeah. Looks like you've got braking fluid coming out. Brake fluid. I wouldn't drive that if I were you. That amount of... Oh, my God, there's loads of it. The bolt must have come off in something. Yeah. Do you live far from here? No. Yeah. Not a bit. Of... But there's a mechanic just around the corner. Uh, that we use. They speak English, they're very good. What, they haven't ripped us off. Just literally, just literally. there. I'll tell you what, if you follow me, I'll, I'll, I'll show you where it is. Yeah. It's literally behind that building. Oh, I think you need to take it there, because you need to lift it up and have a look at it. This scam won't work unless Alex gets the marks to follow him in their car. No, you don't want to be driving down the motorway going, hang on, we're not slowing down here. <laughs> yeah? Let me pull the car out and I'll get behind you. So far, so good. The Max let Alex lead the way to the local repair shop. Just around the corner is a very familiar looking mechanic. It's now over to Paul to get the Max to hand over their keys. Hola. Do you remember us? Oh, hi. How are you? How are you? Doing? Hi. I'm just, um... I, uh, we were just in the car park earlier, and I saw there was a heap load of braking fluid that had come out from underneath there. So I okay. recommend that these people come to you. You guys English? The Spaniard? Yeah, yeah. English. Next time, get us ten percent off. To bring you. You must be again. kidding. Sparking like a true mechanic. What end was it? Was it at your front? It was uh, just here. Just yeah. here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, look at that. Yeah, look. Big big corner. Big corner. Uh, the there, there. Yeah. How long are you going to take you? Um, until my boss gets back, he's going to be back in 20 minutes, but it's a Spanish 20 minutes. Why don't you come back about uh, after 4.30, yeah? 30, yeah? What I'll do is I'll check it. If it's leaking badly, you'll have to leave it or get it towed. Yeah. But, I mean, I can see some spray there, so you might have a leak. Yeah. Yeah. I can make it safe for you so you can get yeah, it to your local okay. garage. Uh, but, yeah, I, I, is that OK? I want it safe. Um, well, i got nothing better to do. Leave me the keys and I'll have a quick look at it. OK, I got it. 
Result. An oil stained t-shirt and a closed garage is all the convincing the Max need to hand over their vehicle. I'm Paul, these guys call me Pablo, so ask for Pablo when you get back. Alex and Jess slip away quietly, but before Paul can make his getaway, a genuine garage customer pulls up. He could throw a spanner in the works, and Paul needs to get rid of him quickly, or his cover could be blown. Better on. No. Not our back, okay. Job done. As soon as the Max turn the corner, Paul takes their car for a test drive from which it will never return. At the arranged time, the Max turn up to find the garage open. The hostlers knew they had a one hour window when it would be closed for an afternoon siesta. But the real mechanics have never heard of the mysterious Pablo. The truth slowly dawns on the marks. The car is gone. Popped into the shop, round the corner, came out, brake fluid coming out of the wheel of the car, and a nice young couple said, ah, I know a mechanic around the corner, follow me. And I've left the car with him, and the people in the tire place next door are denying all knowledge of anybody else. I think I've been exceedingly foolish. And uh, if I were to go to the police, they'd laugh at me. This scam uses a classic technique. We put the marks into a very difficult situation and then manipulate them into making the decision that we want them to make. Nobody wants to drive an unsafe car. Always be careful when taking unsolicited advice from strangers. And whatever you do, never leave anything of value with somebody outside of a company. If they can't get in and you can't get in, come back later. When you're on holiday, you may think twice about carrying around high-end cameras or expensive jewellery. But you may not realise that you're still carrying around something else of great value to hustlers. Your identity. This is the Passport Coolout. Paul has come to this tourist spot outside Malaga Cathedral in Spain. Along with his fellow hustlers, he's going to steal the passports from these American holidaymakers. But not by picking their pockets. The hustlers are going to make them hand their passports over of their own free will. So how will they do it? First, Paul sends a text to Alex and Jess, who are waiting for his signal. In many countries, you must always carry ID, like a passport, and can be spot-checked by the authorities at any time. But do you know exactly what the police look like when you're on holiday? Okay. Sometimes, all it takes is a blue jacket and a walkie-talkie to look the part. And a convincing accent. Okay. Can I see your passport, please? Yeah. I also need to see your passport if it's See. Of course, Alex isn't radioing police headquarters. He's actually talking to Jess, who's just out of sight in the car. Yeah, hold on, oh, sorry, what's just on? some report. We're just doing some check. One of the girls hands over her passport even before Paul can get his one out as a convincer. You have a passport? Stolen passports can be used for identity theft illegal immigration, even terrorism. So it's no wonder they fetch considerable sums on the black market. Alex now has two genuine passports in his hands, and he's not planning to give them back. Hola. Hola. There seems to be a problem with his radio. One moment, I have to check uh, with the radio in the car. Hola. Hola. Si. It's a real pain, you've got to carry your passport everywhere here. And they don't... Whilst Paul keeps the marks talking, Alex is in his car and gone. Oh, <laughs> By the time they realise what's happened, it's too late. 
The last thing the hustlers want now is for the girls to phone the real police. Uh, me, I'm with, uh, so Paul beats them to it. Uh, uh, yes, yes, I speak English, thank you. A police officer just came up to us and he asked for our passports and then got in a car and drove away. Yeah, like, what, two minutes ago? He says he's been called round the corner and he's, he's coming right back. He just got called on a... What? Yeah, it, they said that they've got something going on nearby and they called everybody and he's responded to say that he has three passports. I'm guessing they're ours. All right, well... Okay. Yeah, that's my number. All right. He doesn't speak very good English, but basically, take about 10 minutes. He's gone around. If somebody's stolen something, who I guess looks like us. Likely story, but the fake phone call has bought the hostlers a little more time. No, all Paul has to do is disappear without arousing suspicion. Can you look after that for just a second? Okay. I'll go walk around. He said it's just around the corner. I'm just going to have a look and come back. As proof that he's coming back, he leaves his book with the marks. He'd finish reading it anywhere. Before long, it dawns on the marks that Paul, the policeman, and their passports won't be coming back. We think some people just stole our passport. It's like, I can't yeah. believe it happened. It just it seems so they, surreal. It was like a Spanish police officer, and he came up to us and asked for a passport, which we thought was normal because we've heard that they do that, like check foreigners, and now we don't have our passport. When you're in panic, you're just vulnerable, super vulnerable. This is a really clever use of social compliance, and there are two techniques at work here. First of all, when asked to do something by the police, most people do as they're told. But remember, in a foreign country, you may not know what the police uniform looks like exactly. And if someone else is there confirming that everything appears to be legitimate, then you tend to follow along. And that's what's the core of this scam. Some countries require you to carry your ID at all times, but you should avoid carrying your passport and always check the credentials of anybody claiming to be from the authorities. If they are genuine, then they won't mind verifying this for you. How are you? Nice to see you. Money won is twice as sweet as money earned. You might as well say goodbye now. And money won from a celebrity oh. is even sweeter. I am on the verge of crying. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Let's see if you can do it. Oh. In the celebrity con games. This week, the hustlers are hoping to trip up a 400 meter runner, Olympic and Commonwealth Games athlete Ewan Thomas. How are you? I'm all right, thank you very much. Yeah. A little bit nervous, obviously anticipating this, but apart from that, life's quite good. Not too bad. Yeah. Right. You're still training, and you keep very fit. I, I keep and... fit. Yeah. yeah. I mean, my own athletics training. I sort of retired three years ago, but right. I still try and keep a bit buff. You know. Mm -hmm. So that'll come yeah. in handy, actually. I will. It. It will. Yeah. Because there's a, a little challenge. bit. Of, there's a physical aspect. There's also a mental aspect as well. You right. Why well, are right, you saying you used to be a BMX rider as well? I was, yeah, from yeah. the age of nine years old. Have you still got the grip? Because the grip's really important, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, my grip's quite good. Yeah, and I ride a motorbike as well, so I've got quite strong. Perfect. You know, these are all glasses, but if we had some bottles... Are you gonna... Are gonna use these? All right, OK. Two for Mr okay. Paul. Unfortunately, there's a little bit of money involved. OK. How does a tenor sound? Just so happens a tenor's good, because I've got all a crisp right. new one here. Ewan's yeah, got the bottle to accept the wager and puts his money where his mouth is. You're not going to get it back. But well, maybe if I win the bet, I will. Hey, yeah. maybe. Right. Maybe. If... I'm quite competitive, so I keep buying yeah. it. I'm mega competitive. And there, OK. All right. So here's the idea. Yeah. It's very simple. With one hand, without yeah. using the table, without supporting the bottles in any way, you have to start with the mouth to mouth, just the bottles, not you and yeah. I. Yeah. And uh, you hold them like that. And then you have to end with them, held in the same hand, base to base. OK? All right. And I can't, I can't sort of lean them on myself or nothing like that. Want to give it so, a shot? Yeah, of course. Okay. So you start like this. Okay. Mouth oh, to mouth. Move away. <laughs> okay. I'm struggling just to hold it like that. Right. Okay. okay. Thinking out loud, I, the only way I can imagine doing this, and I don't think I could, would be to drop this one gently, play, gently drop it, yeah. but then I need it to drop very straight, which it won't, because it will be too spinning. My initial thing is literally to drop it and then catch, using that, that bottle, catch the top of that one. If you can do that, you probably should join the circus. Uh, exactly. How would you do it? How would you think? I can't roll, I can't, I can't let go, basically, no, as well. 
Well, you could let go if you want to, to some degree, but you're only allowed to use one hand. You can't lay anything on the table. Yeah, you can move the bottles around the with that hand, mm. but you can't use the table or your body. There you go. You okay. There we go. And he's off. I need that Spider-Man hands. Uh, what do you say that? Ah, <laughs> uh, what if you? Mm. I really want to try harder, but it will drop. It will Look, drop. Do you want us, let's get something try. safe. Yeah. Will a safety net make it any easier? You feel yeah. as if you've had a proper cracker. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Right. And if you break a bottle, don't worry about it. Right, so. Ooh, Ooh. OK. I need to flip that one and catch it. Oh, well. Oh. Looks like he could be on the home straight. I'm starting to get a little worried. He's actually almost done it. Could this be the first £10 loss for the hustlers? Oh. Oh. Close one. It was a valiant effort from Ewan, but in the end, the bottle and his chance to beat the hustlers slipped through his fingers. But to win the tenor, Paul still needs to prove that it can actually be done. And the thing is, you were pretty close, right? There you go, there's one. Two. Three. Just bring it down. There it is. Just to there. Fair play. Look at that. It's all down to the technique. Paul gives you and the step-by-step -step guide. Tilt this one down like that. Yep. Throw it up and catch it as close to the base as possible. Okay. And then move it up so you're holding it between finger and thumb. Yeah? Yeah. And what you do is you kind of relax these fingers and just let it fall down to there, but keep a hold of it. Perfect. Now you come up to there, keep it in position. And then using your fingers, just give it a little slide to run down. So it goes Where's down it? It there. can't go anywhere. My hand's in the way. There it is. Just to there. Um, I'm giving up. I'll, I'll just watch you do it. All right. I, I, admit, Good enough. I admit defeat. It's easy when you know how. A bit of practice, and Ewan will be hustling his own mates with this con. So, that's another celebrity tenor for the hustler's bulging coffers. Take care of the money. Thank you. Yeah, yeah address the now. bank. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, guys. It wasn't a bad effort, though, was it? Cheers, Paul. Cheers. This is Porta Venus on the Spanish Costa del Sol, playground of the jet set and the super rich. But wherever there's this much money, you can be sure to find hustlers and con artists sniffing around for a piece of the action. Presenting Paul as the agent, Alex as the footballer, Jess as the wag, and this guy as the mark in the boat tire scam. Paul's here for phase one, the hook. He's come for an appointment to see a man about a boat. Hey, John. How are you? This is John, who works for a yacht hire company. Uh, this is perfect. I hope. Paul likes the look of John's boat, but he's not thinking of hiring it for himself. Yeah, we got these clients. Um, this guy's a bit of a nightmare, just right. so you know. He's a footballer. He needs to go out Tuesday, and uh, what we had laid up for him is... Well, it's tanked, frankly. So uh, he's going to come up here, have a look around. If he's happy with it, just go ahead. So Paul's client wants to hire a yacht, but the boat he had lined up has broken down. This could be the ideal replacement. He's going to give you a check today. Yeah. He'll pay you guys directly. Mm -hmm. I'll come back and make sure everything's OK. I'm going to leave him with you if that's OK. Do you mind? He's a bit, yeah. he's kind of all flash and all cash. So, right. you know, if you can put up with it for half an hour. All flash and all cash, that must be rich footballer Alex. Here he comes with his glamorous girlfriend Jess for phase two, the bait. 
Well, you don't... It's funny because, you know, good. Morning. good. Hiya. Hiya. Now that everyone's here, the scam's full steam ahead. So, uh, what do you think? Uh, it looks great. Can we have a look around? Yeah. Absolutely. If you don't mind, I'm going to leave you to it. And, uh, hopefully I'll catch you before, uh, before you're done. All right, thanks very much for okay. coming out. No really worries. appreciate no worries. your help. Paul leaves Alex and Jess with the mark. He's going to give them the grand tour of the yacht. If it all goes to plan, Paul will be back later to seal the deal. Good job I didn't wear my heels today, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you. Nice. Wow. I'll let you on board, I'll show you then. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's lovely. It's slightly bigger than the one we had last yeah. year. Already impressed, yeah. they head downstairs to inspect the three luxurious cabins and ensuite bathrooms. Yeah. And then complete the tour on the upper deck. Are you planning to have it for the day? Yeah, yeah. I think. It's, yeah, I think it's next Tuesday. Yeah, start for one day. We're sold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was easy. What are you not going to like? You know. It's just what this rich young couple is after. All that's left to do is to pay for the day's hire. Can you spell that for me? Just as Paul promised, Alex makes out a check. It's for a whopping £4,000. <laughs> Everyone's happy with the deal. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you very much. Especially John, who's just made his company four grand in the space of 10 minutes. Sounds almost too good to be true. Here comes Paul for the final part of the scam the catch. So far, everything the hustlers have done is to convince the mark they're genuine customers. But they're not remotely interested in having a day out at sea. They're fishing for what's in the mark's wallet. Hey, John. What'd they say? They're happy? Um, of course, it's the financial side of the arrangement that Paul's really interested in. How much did he pay you? 4000 on check. You're kidding. Is that right or wrong? What an idiot. Um, it's not right, actually. Uh, he's supposed to pay you guys 3500 And five to you. And 500 to me. Alex's cheque was for too much money and included the £500 commission that should have gone to Paul. And if it's not right, then it's not right. Well, do you want to... Suggest? This is the crucial moment. Can Paul extract any money from the mark? Do you have any pounds? I mean, do you want to... No, I've got nothing. Getting Doesn't more. sound good. Has this scam run aground? Um, you got 700 euros. Bingo. The mark remembers he has a big wad of euros. Well, what's 500 pounds in euros? Let's check that. And Paul helpfully calculates the exchange rate into pounds. So 500 pounds is 620 euros or something like that. Well, do you have 600 euros there? Is that your fault? Yeah, I'll, I'll cover the 20. Wanting to do what's right and thinking that he's covered by Alex's check, the mark happily hands over 600 euros in cash. All right, well, that's good. So that's a good deal. So he's taking it for Tuesday. Yeah. Um, he's said paid you. So right. it seems like everyone's a winner. Paul's got 600 euros in his pocket and the mark has a check for 4,000 pounds. But there's one yeah, I'm crucial I'm difference. The euros are real. But, of course, the cheque isn't worth the paper it's written on. The mark's just fallen for one of the oldest tricks in the book. He's paid out money against the cheque that will bounce the second he tries to cash it. Well, yeah, obviously, I believed it. I, I wasn't expecting anything to be not right. Then the cheque was wrong. So he took the equivalent in euros. I mean, I don't see that many cheques, so I don't do a lot of the transactions. But. You know, if we do get a cheque, it's, it's paid in, and then you don't find out until the bank tell you it's, it's not good. This scam works very well because we're offering the boat company an opportunity to make some very easy money. They don't really have to do anything, and they'll just make some extra cash. Also, this scam takes place in a world where people have money. It's boats, it's fast cars, it's marinas. There is a general assumption that the people who are interested in getting boats or are interested in the fast cars, they've got money. If anybody ever puts you in this situation, you should always think it might be a scam. It's been used by con artists for years. 
in any transaction, always insist on being paid the correct amount, no matter what the circumstances, and wait for that money to clear before acting on it. It's market day in the holiday town of Fuengarola in Spain. Tourists and locals are out to soak up the sun and find a bargain or two. But on this particular morning, there's one extra bric-a-brac stall in the market, set up by Alex and Jess. They're here to make a quick buck in the wrap-up. There's plenty of interest in the hustler's stall, especially their authentic hand-woven carpets. The whole group of you guys. A girl's holiday. Yeah. Oh. oh, is it? And we can. Who's oh. getting married? Oh. Hey, congratulations. congratulations. Cool. <laughs> get a little bit. Can I get that little one? Get <laughs> this? You can't get that. That one. Where there's a hen party, there's usually money. <laughs> I'll tell you what, if, if, you, if you buy a big one, I'll throw this one in. As a wedding gift. <laughs> Alex goes for the hard sell. Two yeah. for the price of one and a half. No. Uh, How much uh, is the big one? As a gift. This one is uh, 70 euros, because it's actually from around here. I reckon we should all do it again. Of course. Yeah. Of course you're welcome to try your skills at haggling. 30. Oh, you're a good. <laughs> oh, that's good. I like it. 30. All right, 50. <laughs> <laughs> These girls are determined not to be ripped off. This one's 120. <laughs> Everything's negotiable. <laughs> In fact, haggling seems to be the order of the day. Let's take 70. How much? <laughs> Is this tourist trying to hustle the hustlers? It's a valiant effort. Um, OK, 100. Alex isn't going to let her walk all over him like a cheap rug. Nine to five and you've got yourself a deal. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> These marks have done well. They've knocked 25 euros off and settled for a price of 95. What a great bargain. You've had the last of our money. Oh, I like that. <laughs> the hustlers seem to be in a generous mood today. 40. 40. All right. Four. Alex has just made their day. That's a 70 euro carpet for almost half price. You get the little one thrown in from us. And he even throws in the miniature rug as a wedding present. Thank you. But his customer service doesn't end there. I'll tell you what, I'll wrap it up for you so you can take it back. You come back in about 10 minutes? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Cool. Do you want us to wrap it for you? Yes, please. All right, give us 10 minutes and we'll wrap it nice and tight so it doesn't get ripped or come apart. Okay. Yeah? Alex offers a wrapping service so that his happy customers can carry their rugs straight onto the return flights to the UK. Having paid, the marks explore the market while Alex gets wrapping. It's not long before the carpets are ready to pick up. The marks are just in time to see Alex putting the last piece of wrapping tape on their package. So, I've wrapped the smaller one inside. OK, great. Yeah. There you go. You've got a little handle. Oh, oh thanks. Oh, that's <laughs> Hello. Just, um, just put the little handle on for you. Yeah. I'm just going to close that up here. Scissors. There you go. Thank you very Enjoy. Much. Thank you. Take care. Thank Have a good holiday. Everyone's happy. The hustlers have their money, the marks have their packages. But they've actually been stitched up good and proper, as they're about to find out. Most tourists would leave their carpets wrapped until they got home. But we asked the marks to open theirs straight away. No, it's definitely your rug. You've been hurt. Yeah, that is that's not the same rug, isn't it? Yeah. Why is it? Yeah. They've just spent their hard-earned euros on a cheap children's playmat. Hopscotch. Is it? Well, we hadn't even wrapped that till we got back to my house. Oh, I don't know. I'd have cried. Yeah, quite possibly. That was the last of my money. I would go and demand my money back. 
So how were they fooled? Simple. When Alex showed each monk the open end of their package, what they actually saw was an offcut from another carpet, hiding the garish pink one underneath. And they wouldn't have discovered they'd been conned until it was too late to do anything about it. By which time, both the market and the hustlers would be long gone. You should never let anything out of your sight if you're having it wrapped up. And remember that if you do buy something from a market stall on holiday, you've got absolutely no chance of getting your money back if you are unhappy with your purchase.